is partnering up with Goonhammer and Joe from War Games Live to bring to you the greatest Streamhouse RTT ever. We've gathered the strongest competitors out there. Quentin Johnson, Kazra Hushidar, Adam Camilleri, Mark Perry, Nick Nadavati, Richard Siegler, John Lennon, and current ITC champion Jack Harpster. These brave warriors are going to duke it out for you over a double elimination format Thursday, March 30th through Sunday, April 2nd. 15 games, 11 rounds, all streamed to you on the Art of War YouTube channel. We asked our friends over at Goodhammer to seed us and put us into a bracket. And then in reverse order of seed, we drafted factions, eight top players, eight different factions. We've even partnered with Away Games, who's professionally painted two beautiful sets of Art of War specific terrain. That's right. We're creating our own Art of War tournament terrain set. Watch live. And not only can you catch the action in real time, but you'll be entered into a raffle to win prize support from our wonderful sponsors. Objective markers from 3D6 Wargaming, Army Painter Mega Sets from the Army Painter, Warp Fire Minis, Big Bear 3D, Table War, and so many more. Keep an eye on the Art of War YouTube channel for daily list reveals starting Wednesday, March 15th. All games will be available for rewatch for our war members at any time. What's up, everyone? Welcome to an exciting Thursday video, except, oh my goodness, it's a Wednesday again. We just keep doing this. We are here, we are live for an episode of Fix My List, the show where Jack and I, two stellar, handsome Art of War coaches, review lists submitted by our wonderful members. Normally we go live on a Thursday, but we'll be talking about it in a second. Thursday's a little busy, so we are here on a Wednesday instead. How's yeah. everyone doing? Oh, you know, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Can't speak for the people in chat, but I'm excited. I'm excited my round one of the Streamhouse RTT is tomorrow. Is that what's tomorrow? A clash of titans, if you will. So uh, be sure to tune in. Mm -hmm. Tune in on YouTube. We are showing them all live. No, um, they're not going to be on our website or anything. And then after they're all aired, they will be Exactly. So there. we're doing the Streamhouse RTT, Eight Titans of Art of War, battling it out in a double elimination, uh, uh, potentially 15-game tournament to crown a single king of the Streamhouse. But uh, you're going to really want to watch that. It's going to be live on our YouTube channel all from Thursday to Sunday. And we're teaming up with Joe from War Games Live to make it as high quality as possible. Of course, after those games are live on YouTube, they are going to get switched over to our website, theartofwar40k.com. Um, or I guess uh, they'll be in the war room. The war room .vhx TV. And if you want a link to that, that is going to be down in the description right now. There is a three-day free trial. You can try it out mm -hmm. and you can see... If it's what you're into, I think it will exactly. be. But we'll uh, and I think I think with the RTT, it's going to be the best time to do it because any games that you don't catch live, you know, you may be busy. It's four straight days of Warhammer action, which is amazing. But I get it; someone else is going to have to sleep or like go eat dinner or something, and they'll miss a game. Not I. Not not us, of course. We'll we're going to be just looking at it. Uh, but make sure you check out the worm. Um, I believe it will be streamed on both of our channels, Joe's and ours. Uh, but I'm not I know sure. for a fact it will be on ours. I. think... I'm not positive if Joe will be restreaming it or not. Um, uh, we will definitely have that answer by tomorrow morning. Because Joe will be here. Because Joe is coming over this afternoon. So uh, we'll, we'll have that answer very soon. I don't actually know. Oh, we have uh, Taryn Ward in chat saying that they know they put a list in the Discord, but not sure it was in the right place. Here's a refresher on how to get your list on Fix My List. Boom. You go to our Discord. You uh, go to the Fix My List channel, and you mm -hmm. post it up. If you are not a member... Again, you will need to be a member of the War Room, but that's easy. There's a link in the description below, and there's a three-day free trial. If you want to submit your list, you can kind of easy. get in, submit your list, you know. Mm -hmm. And as long as it's legible and readable, and please put points on it. Thank you. It helps. <laughs> it helps so much. All right. Um, yep. I think that's it. Uh, I it. think that's it for us for today. Let's get to the lists. Da -da -da. We have High Fleet Grogan. Oh, High Fleet Gorgon. This is from Gorgie Boys. Submitting a Tyranid list, which, you know, I am always happy to see a Tyranid list. I couldn't <laughs> be happier than seeing a Tyranid list. What? Tyranids are awesome. Yeah, no, no, they're good, great. Love them <clears throat> now. Uh, <laughs> so there was no, um, there were no adaptive traits specified. No problem. We can, we can absolutely work on that. So let me look up any notes Mishi might have while you uh, read out the list. All right, so let's read it out. Uh, Hive Tyrant with a Lash Whip and Bone Sword. Venom Cannon with Shard Gullet, Direct Guidance, Catalyst, and the Horror. And then we've got a Swarm Lord with Onslaught Proxism, uh, the Turvagon with Adrenal Gland, Sagging Talons, the Maw Claws of Thyrax, and Poisonous Influence, 
which I believe is the uh, the specific high fleet gorgon uh, upgrade. I thought it might be, but I wasn't. Um, I'll have to double check sure. exactly what that is. Uh, Neurothrope with Catalyst and Neuroparasite. 15 Hormigons with Toxin Sacks. Three times. 30 Termagants. One unit of three warriors with uh, Scything Talons and Devourers. Five Gene Stillers. Five Tyrant Guard with Scything Talons. Three Venom Thropes and the Parasite of More Tracks. Yeah, I had to double check to make sure that was a full 2,000 points. Um, oh yeah, that's that's about right. So Mishi's comments are, Hey guys, trying to look at Gorgon Nids, and I'm open to suggestions on how to make it better. Thanks. Excellent. So this list has uh, three monsters and a bunch of infantry. So in my mind, uh, we're going to start with the adaptive trait. Uh, Gorgon gets access to Lurk, and I think that you absolutely want to uh, to take Lurk if you have not the option for it. Uh, Gorgon's normal trait is reroll a wound roll. I think you're just replacing that with yeah. uh, one of the lurk traits, even though that's pretty decent. It's all right, but you're not building for it. The yeah. way to build for it would be to take a lot of high damage, low amount of attack things and make them more yeah. reliable Carn with that reroll. is kind of like that. Like Carn effects is stuff. the Hive Tyrant with Shard Gullet does like it, but that's not enough reason to be in it over... Yeah. You were saying double cover? I'm, I'm about to say double cover, I, yeah. Double cover just has to be the way in my mind. Those uh, Gaunts and uh, Termagaunts, uh, they're very... Not, they're not as cheap as they used to be. There are five up armor save now, and uh, double cover really helps improve the survivability. Because you, you do get to a fun fact where uh, like a Termagant in cover has a three up save. And that's like, that's heck pretty. Yeah. And then they come back. And then they come back. Yeah. So I um, definitely think that the the Tervagon is going to be where we. I I think that's the strongest thing right now. Is you make. Gaunts, double cover, and then you regen them, and then you have Tyrant Guard and double cover, which, spoiler alert, I will be pushing for more Tyrant Guard. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I did I did call it a Tevagon with Scything Talons, but, uh, you know, that's... Yeah, it's a, I wasn't going to... I wasn't going to criticize. Some, uh, okay. some late night typing. All right. Um, so, going into this, what are your first thoughts, John, as a Nids guy? Um, well, I really like it, uh, mostly because this is very, very similar to what I've uh, what I've played with Hyphly Gorgon. Uh, the only difference is basically that they have five gene stores and a little bit less uh, chaff. I basically run uh, the same thing, but with like two pyrovores instead of the five gene stores. That's fine. Yeah. Um, so looking at it, like, oh god, I don't, I don't actually know what I want to change. I like the big tyrant guard unit, frankly, because with the swarm lord and the hive tyrant, uh, and you really do want the swarm lord here. I normally advocate for double hive tyrant, but Gorgon wants the swarm lord. Why is that? So they want the swarm lord because the uh, high fleet Gorgon stratagem is the main reason to take Gorgon. Uh, so Gorgon's rule is that they always went on a four plus, uh, which is great, and into non vehicles. So Hormigons are suddenly actually punching pretty decently into medium toughness things, uh, or into like T8 monsters. They're hilariously good into like Bellicor. Um And uh, yeah, they just win one of four. <laughs> because uh, it's unmodified. So then their, their stratagem is one CP if you have toxin sacks, and unmodified five or six to hit auto wounds the target. And with the Swarm Lord, you get full rerolls on one unit. So the, the tech here is that you take 15 Hormigants, and you're like, all right, this is 45 attacks. And then you have the Swarm Lord tell them, ah, full rerolls to hit. And then they go in, spend a CP, and it's, all right, here's 45 uh, attacks. I'm going to get about 25 wounds in before I make a wound roll. It's pretty funny. It's not bad. It's not bad. Pretty... Not bad. Then you wound on fours. Then you wound on fours with everything else that hit. So, so but but that part works on vehicles. So a Hormigant squad will on average kill a Rhino with change before I even make a wound roll. It's like, bink! Because they're yeah. AP1, you said? Yeah, they're, they're AP1. Yeah, you, you kill a Redemptor Dreadnought with that. Yeah. Pretty reliably. You kill a Knight. You kill... Not like a big Knight, but like an yeah, Armager. You, you kill a full defense Armager basically immediately. And then funny. you make wound rolls. Then you make yeah. wound rolls. <laughs> okay, uh, so I like it. He's also, you know, a big, big, thick guy in the center of the board, ready to brawl it up. Yeah, the Swarm Lord's tough. He's good in combat. Uh, he's not, like, insane in combat. He's not as good as, like, a tool-up tyrant, but he's better than a normal tyrant. Here's, and he has a little more volume than something like a, like the Reaper. Here's my question. Mm -hmm. Do we need four characters? Uh, so, yes. why is that? Because all of those characters are better than the alternatives. So Neurothrope, I'm wondering if we can get his powers spread throughout the rest of the list and get the points in something else. Because what I would really like, personally, mm -hmm. is to put more stonks into Tyrant Guard. I think they're really good right now. Yep, they are. Um, I So the Neurothrope is what gives you the 3d6 casts. And it also is what gives you the plus one cast, plus one deny found in Philippine against mortals. 
and it's also innately plus one to cast. And as soon as you take that out of the list, you start failing Onslaught, and you start failing Catalyst. That's not good. And as soon as that happens, you are in a world of pain. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what okay. about the Hive Tyrant? Uh, I don't know. The Walking Hive Tyrant yeah, you're is not, such, a, you're such not getting, a stupid stat line. You're not getting better stats for 195 okay. points than a Walking Hive Tyrant. Do we need the three warriors? Uh, I really like them just for a little more synapse. Um, again, again, it's like, what do we replace them with? In, in my mind, the most cuttable things are the Venom Thropes and the Gene Stores. Um, which is sad because yeah. I love Venom Thropes. Well, at that point, we only need to find 25 more points. We have a second unit of five Tyrant Guard if we want it. Yeah, if we want to do that. Um, I, I things... like Tyrant Guard quite a bit, mm -hmm. but I don't know what direction you're looking to lean with this Gorgon list. Yeah, so I think what I would look at, honestly, is I would try to protect that Turvagon a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that uh, to note with Turvagons is that while the Turvagon is within one inch of a Turmagant unit, that has at least 15 models in it. And that Termagant unit is closer to the enemy than the Turvagon. The Turvagon benefits from Lookout Sir despite being a 17 wound monster. Uh, which is fantastic. Yeah, that's one word for it. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Um, it's great. And so you get to a wonderful situation where you have three monsters in this list. The two Hive Tyrants, Swarm Lord and Tyrant, can't be shot as long as the Tyrant Guard are protecting them because they give Lookout Sir. And then as long as the Gaunts are alive, the Turvagon receives it as well. And the problem is that if you have only one Gaunt unit, one 30-man Gaunt unit, your opponent is unfortunately quite likely to uh, kill 16 of them. Because it's very hard to kill 30 Termagants at once, especially once you get Catalyst on them and double cover. It's not that hard to kill 16. And once you kill 16, that 14-man Termagant no longer protects the Turvagon. And if someone kills the Turvagon, it no longer matters that there are Termagants alive. Because the Termagants are useless once the Termagants gone. Because the best thing about the Gaunts is that they can move block and do stupid objective plays because the Turvagon is just slinging 2d6 back a turn, and then you also get to add d3 plus 3 with a CB. Yep. So I I really want a second Turmagon unit. Um, at okay. 7 points each, you you could very easily turn 15 Hormagons into 15 Turmagons and get us about 30 points back. Um, yeah, we could also... We could drop warriors plus venom thropes are termagants or another thirty brick. Uh, also true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like the warriors because of the uh, just the amount of like just because you you do run a little bit low on synapse in weird places because all your synapse is tied to a lookout sir place, but it's still not bad. We we could cut the warriors. Um, I also like their imperative. Uh, the warriors imperative for reference is it gives the army once per game, everything gets exploding sixes in combat. And that is really nice on Hormagons with full rerolls. Is there any way to make them cheaper, or is this the cheapest thing? That know? is the cheapest possible warrior unit. Yeah, you've, you've stripped off their... Uh, Bone Swords and Death Spitters, everything good about the unit. It is now... Now, it's still a, uh, a funny amount of attacks. Um, but it's, uh, it's definitely not as high damage as it used to be. Yeah. Um, for my money, I think that the... Unfortunately, the Venom Thropes and the Gene Stealers are the parts of this that, that most need to go. Um, just yeah, sad I, I mean, love my venom thropes, but... venom thropes are good. They're really annoying to deal with, mm -hmm. but yeah, if we're trying to find more more stuff, that I think that those are the the extra things that get to go. Unfortunately, yeah. I mean, Mishi, I I I would say if I knew uh, Tyranids a little better, mm -hmm. I think you would have gotten a gold star here, but uh, I don't. Yep, and, and there's okay. always things to fix, though. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so I do want a second thirty man. I think for sure. I agree. I want I want at least a fifteen man, but I'm very okay with making it bigger. So ways that we could get that, in in my mind, it's we cut the venom thropes, and the gene stealers. That's two hundred points. I think we then cut one fifteen man hormigant brick. Okay. Um, and that puts us at three hundred and thirty five points. We cut the twenty termigants. That's uh or sorry, we add we add the thirty termagants. I said that very, very poorly. Uh we add thirty more termagants. So we've got a net plus fifteen of the god bodies. It's just now two big termagot bricks, two fifteen hormagot bricks. Okay. Um and that leaves us with about hundred and twenty five points. So what have we my cut, mind, what have we cut so far? We've cut We've cut fifteen hormagots, the venom thropes, and the gene stores. Okay. So that leaves us yeah, that leaves us with hundred and twenty five points. And in my mind, I don't think... I, I do agree with you that more Tyrant Guard is more better. 
Uh, we've got a couple options, though. We could keep the big Tyrant Guard unit. No problem with that. Um, we could go 2 by 4 which is still pretty thick. Or we could just keep the big Tyrant Guard unit and add a couple of cheap things to go play the mission with. Or we could go 2 by 3 Tyrant Guard and get a couple cheap things to play the mission with. I like 2 by 4 I like having the ability to just push. Mm -hmm. um, especially later on in the game. So like you spend the first couple turns, stall, yep. stall, stall. Um, your Termagants get chewed up, chewed up. And then Tyrant Guard and Swarmlord and Hive Tyrant just go... Bleh. Yeah. My 2x3 Tyrant Guard is like what I consider to be like my happy minimum. Where I'm not happy unless I have at least 2x3 Tyrant Guard. I could accept a 5-man Tyrant Guard. I could accept 2x4 Tyrant Guard. I like 5-man because mm -hmm. it's very efficient with Catalyst. It is very thick with Catalyst. It's very thick with Catalyst. Wonderful. Um There is also the possibility, right, mm -hmm. that, we, that we drop Swarming. So he gives rerolls to the Hormigaunts, but maybe that's fine. Like, we cut him, we get a unit of Tyrant Guard, we make the other cuts, get the Termagants, get another unit of Tyrant Guard. Are, are you implying we cut him to replace with a Walkrun? No. Oh. I was just saying, him gone, Tyrant Guard, yes. Uh, I, I would... I would I could justify cutting Swarmlord for a second Hive Tyrant. I, okay. frankly... I really want two Walking Hive Tyrants in the I, style list. You know I like Walking Hive Tyrants. I mm -hmm. mean, it gets us 45 points if we do that. Yep. Um, at that point, there's a lot less reason to be Gorgon in my mind, because then you can switch to Behemoth. And Behemoth gives you the... So you, you no longer get the cool Pox and Sack play, but you instead get access to Fight on Death and a spell for plus one to wound and just plus one strength on basically everything. That sounds better than trying to cheese the, I, the auto wounds. I person uh, so in practice, the the Gorgon ones do hit significantly harder. Um, I like the tool toolkit of uh, Behemoth. That's what I I play when I play the Tyranids. Is I'm playing Behemoth right now, um, but I, I kind of want to keep it Gorgon, just because that's what it started at, and that is kind of the identity of this list. Um, if you're doing uh, if you're doing Gorgon, I think you do keep uh, the Swarmlord. Okay, um, I'm totally into that. He he is he is still really good. Um, it's really just that you, you get to a point where the, um, also sometimes you fail the plus one to wound spell, honestly. Yeah. Um, I, cause I, we actually had a game, uh, I think in the worm between my Tyranid, my Behemoth Tyranids and, uh, Nick's Death Guard. And I ran into several problems where, uh, the, the Gorgon list would have just murdered everything in front of it. And then the, uh, and this was into Death Guard, relatively tough army. Uh, but I kept not counting as charging, losing my strength bonuses. And realizing I was strength three plus one to uh to wound into T six, and I'm like, I could have just been Gorgon and killed this entire unit. So that's a specific okay. example. But honestly, I, I really think I just want to cut those things, get the 30 man Termagant brick in, and go to two by four tyrant guard. Um each tyrant guard is I think 45 points. Does that look? Yeah, so if we yeah. did that, we'd be 10 points over. If we did what exactly? So if we cut the war uh the gene stealers. The Venom Thropes, 15 Hormigaunts. Right. We Replace got... that with 30 Termagants, 3 Tyrant Guard, and then we boop over the 3 and the 5 into 2 formats. It could also be a 5 and a 3. It could be a 5 and a 3, frankly. I'm, I'm pretty okay with that, too. So when you push out, the 5 man gets five, it gets feeling pain. Yeah. I've usually been putting on Termagants, but fair enough. And, and when well, you're doing a push, you can put yeah. on the Tyrant Guard. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm saying, like, first couple turns, Termagants get chewed up. That's yeah. fine. You know, mm -hmm. they take they take time for your opponent to kill. And that's what they're there for. Yep. And then the Tyrant Guard push out, give them Catalyst, and you just delay for the last couple turns. Yeah. Um, I think at that point, since we're 10 points over, the only thing we can realistically cut is um, the Adrenal Glands off of the uh, Turvagon, which is a little bit sad, but I think is okay. Uh, could you actually, honestly, embarrassed that I don't know it, could you look up what Poisonous Influence is? I wish I, wish I could say that I knew. But, um, it's probably the psychic power. Um, well, they all know the psychic power, so it could be that. But um, because the psychic power uh, for Gorgon is uh, mortal wounds on sixes to wound, which is also pretty good. It's not bad. Yeah, just gets a little extra punch to those uh, those gods. All right, Gorgon, poisonous influence is their psychic power. Oh, never mind. Okay, yes. Cool. Um, so they all have it then, but that's pretty easy. Um, 
Yeah, the parasite is staying. <laughs> we haven't even mentioned the parasite because the parasite is just staying. Yeah, the parasite's great. Love parasite. <sighs> Love the parasite. I mean, I hate it, but you know. Yeah, but don't you want your hormigons to consolidate nine inches? I do. I do. Exactly. I I want to have a parasite in my mm -hmm. lists. Honestly, everyone does. So, yeah, honestly, I think we just cut a drink lens off the Turvagon. I'm I'm genuinely happy with that. Like, I think that's a really solid Gorgon list. Okay. Do you want to go over it again? Absolutely. So let me actually just re-examine re the command points here just to make sure that uh, it's yeah, all we, ship shape. We may want to change up some uh, yeah. some more of the traits and relics. So we start at six. Right. Tyrant. There's double tyrant, so we go to five. Because you have to pay the, the arcs of moment thing. You got to pay the troll toll. Shard gullet. Um, direct guidance. Mock claws. Direct guidance. Alien cutting. We start at one. Um, I am of the opinion that you can actually cut... Um, Direct guidance, which is weird to say out loud, but because just by its nature, you're not trying to get the hormigons to hit because you're gonna full rerolls them. So like you're gonna reroll your threes. Yeah, I think you want five but feel no pain on that guy for when the going gets tough. Fully agreed. When the going gets tough, Fully the hive tyrants get agreed. tough. When the when the going gets tough, the the hive tyrant gets gone. Yeah. Um, no, so fully agreed, hundred percent. Couldn't agree more. We're we're giving that hive tyrant um, adaptive biology instead of uh direct guidance i also personally don't rate shard gullet no i don't think shard gullet's great D there's no rerolls inherent you don't want to spend a cp rerolling anything here i think we're just you could give him uh hypermorphic biology which makes him toughness nine and then if their characteristics change uh, they count as double ones yeah that's the gorgon roller trait yeah no it's a gorgon relic oh it's the relic so you can stack it with five of feel no pain to be toughness nine with a five of feel no pain <laughs> not not actually mad about that no like he's tough as nails at that point yeah like he could legitimately bad. exist in front of most armies and soak their entire turn mm -hmm. he might die at the end of it but like that's one of five turns that's just gone yeah that is that is pretty funny um who wants to fight that dude? No one wants to fight that dude. Nobody like, wants to fight that dude. No one wants to fight Hive Tyrant in general. That's you. You could put it in, but I don't think it's necessary. It's very um, funny. It is very funny. It's very funny. Um, and yeah, you can you can direct guidance the the five Tyrant Guard. I don't think that that's necessary. The biggest thing is that oh, uh, I would much rather have the five of Feel No Pain here. Oh yeah, that that's not a I, question. I could frankly, I could cut Shard Gullet, put the five of Feel No Pain on the Hive Tyrant, and then put direct guidance on like the Neurothrope. I wouldn't be mad about that. Because it looks like we only have two warlord traits. We have alien cunning and we have what will be adaptive biology on the hive tyrant. Um, so the hive tyrant can be the warlord and the turvagon doesn't have a warlord trait, which I'm I'm okay with. Um, you yeah. could also take, you know, Reaper of Obliterax. You <clears> could, <throat> there's, there's several good options here. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's also, you know, the passenger for just plus two advance, plus two charge. Yeah, you'll need that. You're a battle ball moving up the table. I think... Um, I think so. We're cutting shard gullet. We're cutting direct guidance. We're replacing direct guidance with adaptive biology. So we're at two CP right now. Um, I believe there's a warlord trait that gives the Trevagon full rerolls to hit, and I don't remember what it is. It's a, it's a generic tier into warlord trait. Because he already has full rerolls to wound. The maw claws give it full rerolls to wound. And if we're gonna make that Trevagon, I usually don't invest in my Trevagon's combat. Heightened senses. Uh, fight first and reroll hits. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. I think if we just toss that on. The Turvagon, it's now the Turvagon is a legit me melee threat because it goes in rerolling all hits, all wounds. Um, and it's not insane in melee, but it's definitely a better than average monster. You can't tank that to the face. I do want to make the Hive Tyrant better in combat than just stock. He's good stock, but yeah, like... We, we could just give him the Reaper instead. And just say, screw it, the Reaper is what it is. No one wants to mess with this. Yeah. You just Shard Gullet, I don't think is... is a, no. I don't even think Shard Gullet's better than Pathogenesis. Also agreed. Uh, Pathogenesis is plus eight inch range, reroll a hit, reroll a wound whenever you shoot. Genuinely stunned. Did you like just read that or did you like remember that? Because I'm genuinely stunned you knew that. No, I, I, I read it. Okay. Yeah. I knew what it did, but I did not know the name. Fair enough. Yeah, the, the whole package of like rattling off all three bullet points and the name, I was like, Jack, my, my bug brother. <laughs> my brother from another Norn Queen. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I... Mm -hmm. Terrans are cool. Terrans, Terrans, cool. Are, Terrans are very cool. Um, yeah, so Alien Cunning is staying. I, I think, honestly, final answer here. I think we're going to say Hive Tyrant gets 
Uh, so one, so we've got six CP. One of them spent on having a hive tyrant. Yes. So five. Alien cunning is. How many on the do you want to end on? I I'm okay ending on one. I wouldn't mind two, but I I'm okay with one. All right. Let's let's aim for one then. So so alien cunning on the parasite, or you don't take the parasite. Yep. Like we're taking the parasite. And we're taking the parasite. So four. Um. So I think we're going. Um, the walkerant is getting both. Uh, two CP. The walkerant is definitely getting the feel no pain, so you can it's chop that down. Definitely getting adaptive so biology. To and I think we just buy him the Reaper. Yeah. Like, nobody wants to mess with Reaper. Nobody wants to mess with that. And then um, and then we just slap uh, Mock Claws on the Turfagon. Yep. Call it a day right there. So that's one. That's one. Yep. All right. Yeah, um, I, I think what you do is you just make it so that if someone comes to mess with you, they find out. Yeah. If, the, if you don't make your opponent find out... You, you will lose games off that. Right, like, so your opponent will rumble up to your Termagants and just start wailing on you, and if you yeah. can't beat them in a straight-up fight with also, Hive Tyrant, Swarm Lord, Turbagon, and Tyrant Guard, then you will yeah. you will have a bad day. Also, fun fact, the Reaper of Blood Rax now ignores minus one damage because they changed the ignore modifier. Sure does. So people S rock up to you Well, I'm just with... saying a three-wound Terminator with minus one damage dies every time it fails a save. Yes. And then three mortals at the end kill another guy. Yep. And also... Um, like dreadnoughts just die. Whereas before, mm -hmm. a dreadnought like I've had the I've had Reaper Flyrant hit Custodes dreadnoughts a couple times. Sometimes they die. Sometimes they don't. When they good. don't, it is brutal. I think now they die a lot. The ignoring the now minus with one the ignoring the minus. That's what I'm saying. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. With the minus one damage being ignored because of the FAQ, mm -hmm. um, now they'll just die every time. Excellent. Yeah. Good. But right. before I've had people. Before mm -hmm. I've had people rock up and just bounce. All right. So let me rattle off the final list here. Please do. So Walking Hive Tyrant with Lash Whip, Bone Sword, Venom Cannon. He has Adaptive Biology and um, the uh, the Reaper of Litterax, and he's the Warlord. Uh, for spells, Catalyst and the Horror seems perfectly fine here. Um, then going on to the Swarm Lord, uh, I think I'm going to actually give him Paroxysm and Neuroparasite instead of Onslaught. Uh, but he stays the same. The Neurothrope, we're going to give Catalyst an Onslaught. Uh, we're going to just reverse those because I really like having Onslaught on plus one um, to cast. Mm -hmm. uh, that Turvagon is going to basically just have Scything Talons, the Mock Claws, of Fire Axe, and um, obviously it'll know Poisonous Influence by default. And then we'll probably toss a second Catalyst onto it, if I'm being honest. That'll run it That's two. three Catalysts. Good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I like... Oh, oh, oh at no, that the, point... Yeah. At that point, sorry, we're going to we're gonna give the Turvagon... Um, uh, we're gonna take it, uh, Catalyst off the Swarm Lord then, and we'll give him Psychic Scream because we don't have a Psychic Scream in here, and we really need that. Yep, just Psychic Scream smite. is just an yep. extra smite. That if you've you smote cast. a couple times, go Psychic Scream. Uh, in that case, I would probably put Onslaught on somebody else. It's not on the Swarm Lord because I cut it off him to put it on the Neurothrow. Got it, got it. Yeah, the because Neurothrow passed. Because otherwise, you're casting Psychic Scream but not Smite with him, and it's like, oh. what are we doing? So you want a guy who. When push comes to shove, we'll just go smite yeah. psychic scream. The secret with Tyranids is to have it so that you can both have the Neurothrope cast all the important spells on a given turn, or on a different given turn, you can have everyone cast smite and know one of the important spells. Yep. It's the way that you go with uh, Harlequin uh, Shadow Seers as well, mm -hmm. which is you give each of them a mortal wound power so that when push comes to shove, you go smite mortal wound power on both. Um, so that was the HQs. Troops, 15 Hormagons, 15 Hormagons, both have Toxin Sacks. 30 Termagons, 30 Termagons, 3 Warriors as pictured. Elites, 5 Tyrant Guard, 3 Tyrant Guard, all Scything Talons. Fast Attack, Parasite and Mortrex with Alien Cunning. That seems cool. It's 2K. Good list, Mishi. Uh, this mm -hmm. probably would have received a gold star if I'd known more about Tyranids. Still. Now I just know what Pathogenesis does. <laughs> it's a cool word. And knowing um, is half the battle. Speaking of gold stars, I gave one out for someone who posted your um, your Slanesh list. Like, almost point for point. They just left out the 10 Seekers. Well, that's my advice. So then. that would be how we fix it. Somebody just posted up a mono Slanesh demon list that is 80, <laughs> 80 demonettes and 18 fiends and four characters. Love it. Uh, it's exactly what John was running. So <laughs> I a gold star. Let's move on. All right. Um, before we move on, though, mm -hmm. we, I want to welcome Moonlit and Ari. Welcome to the War Room. Uh, welcome, to your Glad to have you in. If you want to post your list up to fix my list, uh, then Absolutely. it's yeah. in the Discord Fix My List channel. Now that you're a member of YouTube channel, you'll also get access to our Discord, and you can go right in there. And uh, before we hit that second list, I think now is actually a really good time to mention uh, one of the sponsors of this video, Voxlink. So uh, Voxlink is a wonderful app that is currently being worked on. 
uh, and uh, you can find them on Kickstarter. And if you go to their Kickstarter, you can find out a lot more about it. But what Voxlink is, is it's an app that's like a social network app designed for gamers by gamers. So you basically have your own uh, profile and homepage where you can get, you know, curated content based on your interests. So, uh, you know, me being uh, who I am, I might end up getting recommended Tyranid Battle Reports and like the Art of War channel and things of that nature. I can also use Voxlink to get discounts on various hobby product. And the best part is you can use Voxlink to, um, you can use Voxlink to find other gamers. So you can kind of make your own profile. Let's say I, for example, was looking to get a pickup game of 40K and meet some new people. I could put into the app that I am looking for a 2000 point Warhammer 40,000 competitive game, and I could put my location in a radius. And then I could use the app to find other players in that, in that area who are looking for the same thing. So if I'm traveling to a new place, learning a new game, just trying to find new people close to me, I can find other gamers with similar interests to me. Yep, just like that. They have a Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. It uh, it just fired, just got funded. So it hit, its, it hit its goal. Uh, there Fantastic. are only There's only two hours left if you want to get in on it, Ooh. but it will get you um, discounts on merch, tournament entries, that sort of thing. If you mm -hmm. want to get into it, it's uh, Kickstarter, Vox Link, two words. So check that out. There's a, It's only going to be up for another two hours. All right, now's the best time to do it. All right, well, we've got another list to fix, right? That is correct. I'm excited for it. I'm sure this is going to be something awesome like Chaos Knights. Tau! <laughs> uh, he got me. Right. <laughs> got him, boys. All right. Do you want me to read the list while you uh, uh, look that up? Yep. I'll look up uh, what comments John Apocalypse has. All right. So uh, first up is Commander Farsight, who is the Warlord with Exemplar of the Matka. Uh, then we've got an Enforcer Commander with Precision of the Hunter. Cyclic Ion, Fusion, Plasma, Shield... Uh, an Onager Gauntlet, two Marker Drones, uh, ten Breachers with a Guardian Drone, that again. Uh, three Crisis Suits, ooh, he's got small Crisis Units, I like this list. Three Crisis Suits with uh, two Burst Cannons, three Missile Pods, three Flamers, Iridium, three Shield Generators, three Marker Drones. What is the other slot? What do you mean? There's eight guns. And, nine cri uh, and three Crisis Suits. There might be one. There Some guy's got to have, like, the f something. He um, probably has a Fusion. Then it's three Crisis uh, Battle Suits, and it looks like it's... Oh, no, this is different. So three Fusion, three Missile Pod, three Plasma. Oh, there's one Fusion in there? No, 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 no. It's just he just has one, one open slot. All right, well, that's yeah. one thing we can fix, um, considering there's ten points. <laughs> Iridium Battle Suit, Missile Pod, Shield, Gen, and Tau Flamer on the Shaz Frey. Oh, okay. Oh, so there's one Tau Flamer in there. Oh, no, there's... No, no, no. He's, he just left a hard point. Okay. Free. Um, well, we can find something to do with that. Uh, then it's three Burst three uh, burst Cannon Piranhas in the Fast Attack slot. Looks like one unit of three. Uh, then two hammerhead gunships and heavy support. A singular riptide with plasma, heavy burst cannon, velocity tracker, all the good fixings that are free, as well as two shield and missile drones. Finally, two devilfish, and we round out at 1990. All right. So looking at comments, we've got uh, from John Apocalypse himself. What a name. That's uh, great, right? I like it. I am currently making my Farsight Enclaves list, and this is how I plan to finish it. Right now, my army has the Enforcer, mm -hmm. one Hammerhead, Crisis Suits, and Breacher teams. I'd like to keep Farsight and the Gauntlet, because I like the idea of having two powerful melee units in my shooting army. Let me know what you think. Absolutely. I, I have to ask. Do you think they would object to us replacing the Onager Gauntlet with the... Um... Uh, that stupid flamer that works in melee. The thermonutronic projector. Absolutely, P forgive me. Yes, the thermonutronic projector. Uh, that's. I would recommend it. It is not required, but I'm a much bigger fan of Enforcer with the thermonutronic projector and the Bagel Hunter's plate. The Bagel Hunter. The Bagel Hunter's plate gives him plus one to a saving so throws put and a, a five of feeling pain. On it, maybe some red onions. Which is everything the, seasoning. Oh yeah, I totally. On the would. Bagel Hunter. Oh yeah, that sounds great. Dude, I haven't, I haven't eaten yet. That sounds awesome. Um, yes, an Enforcer Commander with a Thermoneutronic Projector against some profiles hits harder and against some profiles hits less hard. Mm -hmm. But generally, I would say hits harder with just Thermo. And then with the Bigel Hunter's play, he's going to hit over and over and over and over and yeah. over again because he's a massive pain in the behind to remove. Mm -hmm. But looking at this list, the things that stand out to me Mm -hmm. Right, is I don't like the loadouts on the crisis battle suits, personally. Okay. So you don't like the like the weapon mix that they have. 
I don't like the weapon mix, and I don't like three-man crisis. Gotcha. Well, let me ask some questions about Farsight, because I think I know what they're going for, but I want to clarify. Absolutely. So my understanding is that Farsight Enclaves, their specific stratagem, is pick a crisis suit unit that just deep struck onto the battlefield. Yep. And that unit gets full rerolls to hit and wound, and it costs less CP if it's a three-man. Correct. Drop okay. zone clear. Drop zone clear. Drop zone clear. I have played with uh, Farsight Enclaves a couple times. Drop zone clear is pretty good. Mm -hmm. It is pretty good. Here's the issue, though. All right. The three-man crisis battle suits are not worth their points because it's 245 and 2 CP to come in, shoot once, and die. Because if they come in and shoot, they are probably not fire and fading anywhere fun. They, I believe, cannot fire and fade the turn yep. they come in. And they've got uh, three marker drones in each unit. And correct me if I'm wrong... Can they not do the marker drone action on the turn of the deep strike? Correct. So because the they're not on the oh, table. Okay. So the marker drones aren't great with that plan. And if we're not going yep. for that plan, we can change this loadout. So things uh things I look things I look for here, right? We have too many marker drones. Because okay. we have a lot of marker drones, but only a couple units that are gonna benefit from them. Fair enough. And we're also far side enclaves, so we can run a little low to the ground on marker lights in yeah, the first that's true, place. Because if you get close. Because when you get within nine inches, you will have a marker light, which you won't have on the drop turn. But you also won't get to throw your marker lights out. So I think we have a little too many marker marker drones. Mm -hmm. That's fine. That's fixable. Those just turn some of those turn into shield drones. Uh, I don't like the loadout on the enforcer. I think you can get a little more um, efficient with his damage. You probably will have to spend a few extra points, but you can get a guy who really wrecks people as opposed to one that this guy will hurt, but we can make him hit harder. Okay. Look, I'm I'm always down for squeezing more pain out of the list. That's right. So uh, then we've got two units of 10 Breachers with Guardian Drones. Mm -hmm. I want these units to be bare bones. What does the Guardian Drone do for them? That's It's a 10-point upgrade, right? It's just 10 points for Guardian Drones? I believe so. So I, let me check. My memory is it gives them like a, like a 5 or a 6 of invul. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, that sounds right. I have never included it. 10 points isn't bad for that, but it definitely feels like something you add at the very last step if you've got free points. It's not something you start with. No. Certainly not. Uh, so, these guys are... Yeah. The idea is to keep them cheap. Yeah. While you look that up, do you want me to give my initial takes? Because honestly, you're going to have a little more in-depth town knowledge than I do. Yeah, go for it. So, first thing I noticed here is not so much about the war gear loadouts. Jack will cover that much better than I will. Um, the three piranhas as a single three-man, I'm not aware of any synergy that makes a three-man piranha any better than three solo piranhas other than... Technically, you get a little bit more marker light efficiency, but Piranhas with Burst Cannons aren't getting any of that. So I feel like this list needs more stuff. I really want those three Piranhas to be three single Piranhas. And I also noticed that there is not a single Kroot in this list. And now perhaps uh, John Apocalypse has declared an Apocalypse on all Kroot, which fair enough. Um, Kroot aren't that great anymore. They went up in points. But there's no Hounds either. Kroot Hounds, all kinds of Kroot are not off the table. Crude hounds are quite good. Crude hounds. I mean, now, now, obviously, I would argue for a crude tox if I could, or a crude shaper who maybe carries a relic. But um, really, the thing that I'm missing is that I want this list to have a couple more cheap things because the devilfish and breachers are a little expensive. Two crisis suits are a little expensive. Hammerheads, the riptide. There's a lot of resources in here which are good but not cheap. And there's not enough cheap stuff in my mind because Tau needs cheap stuff to screen and play the mission. Because the Talus is not durable enough to just get into a punching contest where they're trying to stay on objectives with crisis suits. Yeah. No. We so. we are at a serious lack of units that <clears throat> want to exist yep. in on in a place on the board. Yeah, and that's what I really want. I don't I'm I'm sure Jack I, I honestly didn't even recognize that they had bad loadouts, so I was just like, Yep, those are guns that I've been shot with. Cool. Uh <laughs> <laughs> that's about as far as my brain goes when I see yep. it. So a guardian drone <laughs> is a one wound shield drone. Okay. That gives the unit mini transhuman. That's cute. It definitely is the last thing we're going to add to this list. It is the first thing we're removing it's from the list. It's also that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I like breachers and fish. Mm -hmm. They're really good for scoring points. They're good for taking objectives away. They're good for making your opponent think about your threat range. But I've, I've played quite a bit of Tau um, recently. I took them uh, to last year's Cherokee, and I took them for... Uh, to Europe for our Team America WTC, mm -hmm. um, so I, I've done quite a bit of quite a bit of tower work. So breachers in fish are good in far side enclaves. When you get close, you get that marker light. Love that. That's great. Love that. And they have what a strat to reroll wounds, if I'm correct. 
I believe so. I Skin never spooky. actually played with breachers. Yeah. Yeah, and they, uh, I'm, they're like strength six AP two. They're they're pretty nasty. I'm very down to keep that part of the list for sure. Two devil fish full of two breachers gives you mission play too. Yep, I like Love it. that. I like it. You can take away uh, objectives really really well with them. Mm -hmm. You can do um, the aerospace relays really well with them because they are fire warriors. Mm -hmm. But let's look at uh, the rest of the list. Farsight, love him. If you're playing Farsight Enclaves, you're playing Commander Farsight. 100% get it. He's also, a great unit. The and model. Yes. The model. The model. Continue. Uh, commander Farsight is great. He's cheap. He's a crisis commander. He's everything you want. Mm -hmm. Then you have the choice of either Cold Star or an Enforcer. And both of them are perfectly viable. I tend to run myself a Cold Star just for the mobility. But the Enforcer is really durable and if you load him out correctly i think does way more damage so we can go either of those two directions looking at the crisis suits what i want in this list more than anything else is one crisis unit to put buffs on because we have exemplar of the montka we have the crisis commander you ignore hit penalties you can put out a uh, a marker light so they're hitting on threes the re-rolling ones we have the capability to buff a crisis suit unit high like hard mm -hmm. here the issue is that we don't have a crisis suit unit to receive those buffs both of these units want to deep strike in shoot and then unfortunately will probably die yeah i don't like the three-man crisis units i have tried them i have played with them i played with them when they were significantly cheaper right i played with them when that loadout would be like be like 180 195 yeah i don't want to hear it and I'm not even sure they were what I wanted then, because you were still spending a ton of CP on them. I think the three-man crisis units are not where you want to go, because they're just not going to be efficient. Your opponent's going to zone them out. And if you're planning to put them on the table, what you want is to bulk them up at least to a five-man. Are you thinking you want two units still, or do you think you want to combine this into one five-man and have some some uh, some chatter to play with, a little, a little change? I actually think I want to combine this into a five-man and go big. Okay, so like a lot of drones, maybe. Like a like a five or a six man with a lot of drones. Hmm. I think okay. that's that's the way I would take uh, Tau right now. It's the way Siegs is running them to the Streamhouse RTT. Oh, it's boy. the way that Skark played them on Team Poland at WTC. Like I think I think that's the way that I would go if I were going that way. Mm -hmm. You have to have one durable unit that is difficult to deal with and will shred your opponent in shooting. Yeah. So. With that in mind, you are 100% correct. I think the three piranhas need to split up, mm -hmm. become three one-mans. Don't even have to stay at three, frankly. We could go to two. Yeah. I like piranhas. We go to like two and then two units of crew hounds. Mm -hmm. um, the hammerheads, they will disappoint you. They just will. The sad, the sad fact of hammerheads, and I took two to WTC and I would have cut the one that wasn't long strike. Um... The sad part is you have to make every plan as though they don't exist. Mm -hmm. Because the, if they miss, it's not like they do some damage, it's that they do no damage. Yeah. So I like Hammerheads. I like... Seeks has one. I would probably leave at least one in so you have submunitions into about, some matchups. I about to say that. Um, submunitions is a great stratagem. You have double accelerator burst. They're not bad. You could leave two in and be totally fine. But that doesn't leave us with like a ton of points to play with. Mm -hmm. So, Tower, unfortunately, a little tough to write lists for because everything is so atomized in the, the way that you build the list. It's like, this upgrade is this, but then it becomes that if you include two. So, if uh, give me one second while I, while I pull this up. No problem. So, so, theoretically, we might cut one hammerhead here. Um, and then we're combining the, three, the two three crisis battle suits into a five band with a lot more drones. And we're probably changing their weapon loaded as well. Um, what's your, while you're looking that up, what's your favorite loadout on one crisis suit? On one crisis suit unit? Like, like, like what's your weapon loadout? Like, do you do one burst, one cyclic, one plasma? You can, that's the cheap loadout. Um, what I'm going to advocate here is what Siegs is also running, oh, okay. which is cyclic, cyclic, plus a third. Yeah. It's a, it's expensive. It's not cheap, but boy, does it put the pain out. Yeah, it does hurt a lot. It hurts a lot. It hurts, like different now i will say he's running borkan which mm -hmm. is probably where i would also go if i were running uh tau fair enough but 
in Farsight Enclaves, you can make a very powerful loadout. That just might be the point where you don't take double cyclic because of uh, the Borkon range. You go up to 22 in Borkon. Mm -hmm. Here, you're only 18. But you do want to be within 9 at some point during the game. Yeah, to get the, the Exemplar of Monka. Exactly. And also to get your, your free Marker Lights. Yeah, yeah, to get your free Marker Lights, get Exemplar of the Monka. Uh, this, this list probably won't pick Monka very often. But you can. If you think you're you're going to kill your opponent quick, you can do it. I'm still a fan of planes. The planes, okay. I still think planes are very very good. I think that they are also very good. Um, they're less. They're just they're like if you go second and you put them into reserves, but you don't have to spend for the warlord trait. Mm -hmm. I think which is you know which is quite strong. So let me let me load this up real quick. So we got double breachers. We've we'll leave the crisis suits out of this. Let's go double piranha. Okay. And double Crute Hounds, because I like Piranhas. So at the moment, Fast Attack is our is our uh, slot, which perfectly fits. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, I like having a Riptide. I don't have a problem with that. I don't even have a problem with having the Heavy Burst Cannon. I'm going to leave the Shielded Missile Drones off for now. They're okay. a little expensive. Are they 15 each? They are 15 each. Okay. So they're a little on the pricey side. We can put one in. Uh, but that, I'm not going to start there. Yeah, that's fair. So with Farsight, Enforcer, 20 Breachers, 2 units of Crute Hounds, 2 Piranhas, a Riptide with Burst, and 2 Devilfish, we are at 1038. Hold on. Oh, that, so we haven't had a Crisis suit. No Crisis Suits, no Hammerheads. Okay. So let's get a big, juicy Crisis Suit unit in. Yeah. Uh, this this we're one... We're going 5-man with... How many how many drones are you thinking? Are you thinking ten? So fifteen man. Are you at all worried that maximum blast is going to be a problem into certain matchups? I don't think so. I think okay. it's better to have the extra drones than it is to cut myself down to a five man with five drones. Because a five man with five drones doesn't live nearly as long as a ten as a five man with ten drones. Okay. How many of those are you thinking uh, shields? Uh, I'm thinking like two guys with shield gems. Oh, you mean shield drones? Yeah. Shield drones. Probably like seven at least. Okay, cool. Because we're looking to have this thing be tough. We're pouring a ton of points into it. This is like a it's like an AOS unit, right? Yep. We're looking to pour a ton of points into it. This is what you're hang. This is what you will hang your hat on in games. All right. Well, uh, let's find out how much this bad boy costs. Yeah, I'm going to be disappointed with how much it costs. I promise you that much. Mm -hmm. um, let's go cyclic fusion or uh, cyclic missile plasma. Cyclic missile plasma. Okay. Yes. So we're not doubling up on any weapon, so we're not getting the more expensive weapon. Yep. But we're taking three multi-damage weapons here. Yes. If we have... Um, oh, John Apocalypse is a two-pound super chat that says, the Piranhas were meant to be one unit each. That okay. that makes sense. Yep. That makes sense. All right. So let's... If we have extra points, we can upgrade how many cyclics we have. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of double cyclic. Yep. Quite but a the, big fan. So, but the second cyclic's a little pricey. So we're going to have to see where the list comes out to. Yep. So we're going to go Cyclic, Missile Pod, and Plasma Rifle, mm -hmm. which is a decent loadout. You can also go Cyclic, Missile Pod, Fusion Blaster. Cyclic, Missile Pod, Plasma. Okay. Um, duplicate. 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 All right. Now let's add, I'm going to say seven Marker Drones, or sorry, seven Shield Drones, and three marker drones. Okay. There's a possibility that this goes up to a six man because, as I said, this is your list. Like this unit yep. is your list. All right. It's 530 points for five dudes with uh, cyclic iridium missile pod plasma rifle. Then, if we want to add two shield gens, that's going to go up to 540. Okay. And um, and then you'd have three that ignore cover, two with. Uh, yeah. That's Honestly, like I think. See, the problem with Farsight Enclaves is you can't give them five but feel no pain, which is something I really want. Yeah. It's just how life works sometimes. Mm -hmm. But even so, I think it's fine. Yeah. Even so. If you're running this in Borkan or Tau Sept or something, this is where you find find your way to having a, a um, an ethereal so you can give mm -hmm. them five but feel no pain. But without it, I think it's fine. You benefit from Farsight Enclaves quite a bit. So now let's go over to the flyer section, and we're going to add two sun sharks. They should be easier to acquire now. Yes. <laughs> and then over in the heavy support slot, we'll add a hammerhead, and we will give it the accelerator burst. And how many points does this put us at? 
This puts us at 53 points over. Ah, that's one piranha? That's one piranha. Okay. And we still have our minimum size. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, hold on. I need to add the shield gens. Because I, I actually think this list wants shield gens on everybody in the unit. Ah, so not a ignore cover. Yes. Okay. Oh, I accidentally put them in as crisis bodyguards. No. Oh, no. Anyway, so that means that we would be over by 18 points. Um, that could... Where would that come out of? Um, Honestly, it's probably the Riptide becomes something else. Oh, sad. Yeah, it's probably the Riptide becomes something else. Because we can drop the Riptide for a Hammerhead, if you're happy keeping the two Hammerheads. Mm -hmm. And then we get more trash in the list. Could you cut the accelerator bursts off the hammerheads? That's 10 points? You can. Honestly, at that point, I cut the hammerhead. Okay. Yeah. Well, 53 over was really not bad, Taryn. 53 over is like, oh, we can fit that. We just cut a piranha. Yeah. Easy. So looking at this list, I think we're cutting either the hammerhead or the riptide. Okay. If we cut the riptide, I think we get more. True. Yeah. So, I like that the, the Riptide gives you another Fire and Fade thing. That's true, because you Fire and Fade with the Crisis, and you Fire and Fade with mm -hmm. the Riptide. But what cutting the Riptide for a Hammerhead does is lets you get a six battle suit. Fair enough. Um, you might have to fiddle around with some points a little bit, because uh, this currently is 13 over if we do that, so that's cutting a Shield Drone. Mm -hmm. That's easy enough. So, yes, what this would look like, theoretically, and then you, and I'll, oh, and I didn't get out the Enforcer. Gosh darn it. This guy's expensive. Oh, here we come. Yeah, yeah, here we this come. This is the Thermotronics. It sounds like we're definitely cutting the Rift. <laughs> yeah. We Although yeah, we the, could also just cut the Hammerhead and, like, replace it with something, like, not expensive at all. Yeah, that's what that's what it sounds like. Man, writing um, Tau lists in... Uh, in it's apps is is very complicated. Mm -hmm. So we're not getting the we're not getting the sixth guy. That's not that's not real. Okay. But we are getting the fifth guy really really easily. Um, we do have to cut a shield drone in order to fit in what looks like three. Uh, uh, all right, I have it. I have it now. It's going to be two shield gens in the unit. Love it. Two shield gens in the unit. We have iridium. We have stim injectors. So you have mm -hmm. that man in the front who's very difficult to get rid of. Yep. And there's a bunch of drones at the front as well. Yes. And there's a bunch of drones. There's and seven shield drones and two marker drones. Okay. Do we think we've got a... Is this a final version, I think? Or? I think this is actually this is actually a final version. Right. So let me read it out. Mm -hmm. Sorry, making tell this is a little bit ticky tacky, but uh, I, All think, good. I think we're there. So we have Farsight. We have an enforcer commander that we have spent... A bucket of points on, good, but he honestly. is going to be good. He has three cyclic ion blasters, and he has the thermoneutronic projector. Mm -hmm. He has two marker drones. He has uh, the bagel hunter's plate, and he has precision of the hunter. Oof. Yeah, oh, yeah, that guy so, slays. Not the onager, but still a very respectable melee unit to keep in line the theme of two melee characters. Yeah, the additional attacks is going to make him more of a melee threat most of the time. I, I like it. Yeah, I actually think he's better in combat most of the time. It's only against things like armatures, stuff like that, that you're going to have, yeah. that you're going to struggle more. Yeah, damage is basically where it's a problem. Yeah. Uh, then we have 20 Breachers mm -hmm. in Fish. We have a Crisis Bodyguard unit, or Christ, regular Crisis unit, sorry, I just put it in as Bodyguards in, yep. in, my, uh, in my phone. But we have a regular Crisis unit with a Cyclic, Missile Pod, Plasma, Stim Injectors, and Iridium on the Sergeant. Two of them have shield gens, the rest ignore cover. Cool. We have two marker drones and seven shield drones. Okay, so a five man with nine drones. Very thick. Very thick. Mm -hmm. Then we have two units of Crute Hounds and a solo piranha. Double hammerheads with accelerator bursts. We have double sun shark bomber and double devilfish. Nice. That does sound pretty darn good. Yeah, that hits. That hits really hard. It sounds like a good list. Yeah. Okay. Um, it hits hard enough that you can remove stuff that's yeah, in front of you. That's not what I want. Yeah. Please leave my stuff alive. Nope, it's all dead. And you have, in Farsight Enclaves, it does reward, Farsight and Tau Sept both reward hammerheads because you get the free reroll to hit and then you have a reroll to wound. Yep. So you'll Very key. get through those, uh, those rail guns. You still have four markers and mm -hmm. that's probably enough that the Crisis will get it 
and then a hammerhead will get it if necessary. And then turn hammerheads don't need it. Turn three on, you can do the marker lights with the uh, the planes, right? And then you do have two planes to do the marker lights with as well. Mm -hmm. So you actually have six marker lights and you're in far side enclaves, which means you can run a little a little tight on them. There we go. This list hits significantly harder than the list that is here, and I think is concentrated in ways where your your buffs actually okay. work properly. I like it a lot. All right. Well, one one more. One more. All right. Well, we Don have Apocalypse. We have feel chaos, feel free yeah. to let me know what you think about uh, your your Mondo Crisis unit. Yep. All right. We have Francois. All right. Francois is hitting us with an Emperor's Children list. There appears to be some Slanesh tacked on, which I'm very in favor of. Shall we? Absolutely. All right. So we've got a, a Demon Prince, who's the Warlord with wings, a sword, and warp time. A Dark Apostle with illusory supplications. A Lord Discordant with unholy fortitude and a Bale Flamer. Then a Master of Possession with Mutated Invigoration, Pact of Flesh. In the Elite slot, five possessed. Very nice. Troops, we've got one, two, three, four, five Noise Marines. Ah, 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 ah. Um, each uh, unit looks like it has a Blast Master and an Icon. Almost all of them have a Power Fist. Oh, sorry, all do have a Power Fist. One does not have an Icon. Yep. And then uh, Fast Attack is one five-man biker with an Icon, the Black Maze, and a Meltagun. One Chaos Spawn in that Fast Attack slot. Then in the uh, Slanesh Attachment, we have an Infernal and Rapturous. 10 D minutes and uh, looks like a nine strong seeker unit. That's right. So this list is from his 11 year old Noah wants to play Emperor's Children since he loves playing bass guitar as so the more noise Marines the better. Mm -hmm. Please help him in making it more competitive so he can kick his papa's butt. All right. First things first. We're keeping all those noise Marines. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Those aren't leaving the list. Noise Marines are great. In fact, we're getting that icon back on that I'm fifth unit. I'm really going to try. Yeah. All right. Um, so I like Slanesh as an ally conceptually. Um, you get um, uh, a character. I think I'd prefer to have uh, the Psyker. And um, I also think I'd prefer to have Fiends than Seekers. I also think we're a little character heavy in the HQ slot of the Emperor's Children here. I feel like not all four of those characters are doing something I care about. Yeah, I. Yeah, we'll we'll get to having units for buffs, mm -hmm. but there's no. We have a master of possession, and we have a dark apostle, neither of which really have a unit that wants them. Yeah, I'm pretty. Uh, the possessed aren't core. Can does illusory supplications? Is it core lock? Oh yeah, it is. All right, so it doesn't go unpossessed. Then. It does not go unpossessed. Huh. You can cast feel no pain on the possessed because they have mark of slanesh, but that is that's that's it. Okay. And the Master of Possession really is just buffing the five-man possessed. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, we've got, we've got things to work with. Yep. Here. We've got things to work with. So let me pull up the list here. Mm -hmm. Boop, boop. Because we need to make sure that our Slanesh detachment is a certain amount of our power level, 25%. Yep. I'm not planning to go too crazy on the Slanesh demons, so I think it'll be okay. Yeah, but, I uh, think we'll, it'll we'll be have fine. to keep that in mind. So that's the first thing I noticed was we have some characters who do not have targets. So yeah. we either cut the characters or we make the targets. Mm -hmm. So what is your what's your thought there? Um, my thought is the Dark Apostle, even though Illusory Supplication is a little bit annoying, it does give advance and charge by default because it's everyone's Slanesh here. So the Dark Apostle I like having just so that I can theoretically tell a Noise Marine unit, oh, you advance and charge anyway advance six, charge six plus D six, just to slingshot obsec. So in my mind of the two support characters, the Dark Apostle and Master Possession, the Dark Apostle is the one I'm significantly more interested in. Interesting, I would go the other way myself. Really, so is it because you don't think the advance and charge is necessary as long as we're playing it in an MSU gun unit? Yep, okay. And also what I want to do is I want to uh, kind of meet the having a big unit halfway. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go like a full 10-man Terminator unit that wants both the Dark Apostle and the Master of Possession. My thought or what I was going to suggest was we go a 10-man Possessed unit with the Black Rune of Damnation and just keep the Master of Possession to give them Feel No Pain and regen a guy every turn. I'm very okay with that as well. It's still, a, it's not that expensive of a unit. It's uh, quite tough. Yep. It's uh, 280 mm -hmm. at that point, and we get... Most of the way there by just cutting the Dark Apostle. Yeah, well, you, we really, when you put it like that, we really do. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we'd lose access to Advance and Charge. Illusory Supplications isn't a big deal in this list, so that's not a big loss. 
It's mainly the advance and charge. Yes. Um, okay. But again, that only though that works on core and character, which is a decent amount of voice. Yeah, because you can use it to missile the disco or the demon prince or an obsec noise marine unit. Yeah. So here's my first thought, and mm -hmm. you can let me know what you think. What I would, what I want this list to be, right, is master possession, ten possessed, as kind of this package. It's like four hundred points. Very annoying to deal Sounds with. Sounds great. Uh, probably the same number of noise marines that are here. Mm -hmm. Some combat characters. And then uh, 12 Fiends. I would... I, well, we're, we're, I don't think we're going to be able to fit 12 Fiends, just power level-wise. They're, they're, they're very expensive. How much are there, uh, is their power level? I have no idea. But it's 240 points for that. And we also will need the, uh, the HQ and the troops. Right. So let me, let me see what the, what the cost is, uh, power level-wise, for 12 mm -hmm. Fiends, 10 Demonettes, and then... a. Probably a herald to give them uh, the five up feeling of pain. Yeah, I like the demon prince and the disco conceptually because they're both good combat characters that can hide behind units here, and I think chaos does combat characters very well. It's possible we end up cutting one or both of them, but initially I want to keep them in because I like hard hitting chaos space marine characters. So I don't want to start by cutting that. I want to see what we can fit without cutting them. I like the disco and the demon prince. I'd love to have both at the end of this. Although I think that this list is going to end up spending more CP than it currently is. Um, because we currently start at four CP, and that seems like a an affront to the to slash. Yeah, we're starting more traits. We're, we're, CSM's strongest part is the characters it can make, and mm -hmm. so let's make some characters. So here's the thing: that detachment, a transweaver, ten demonettes, and twelve fiends, which I think is a very good detachment. That is a, an obscenely good detachment. Oh, obscene! Like obscene is thirty power level. So that means we need to make this list uh, ninety. The, the the Emperor's Children part of it. Okay. And I think that is very doable. Are you implying that we take some six-man noise marines? I, you know, you're, you're putting the words right in my mouth. Okay. I am very down to see if we can fit that. Yep. So let me put in the proposed, like, starting point. Mm -hmm. And I also want to get an icon on the Possessed because they benefit from the, the Slaneshi icon. Yeah. Because they have Slaanesh. It's the only way to give them a god mark. So... My thought looking at this list, mm -hmm. what do you think of the Chaos Bikers? I don't think they add enough. And I think what they add can be replaced by Fiends. That was my take too. Yeah. Um, uh, a question from Super Baharoth that is uh, about to have a very unfortunate answer. Because it comes with a super chat, but it's very relevant. Uh, five dollar super chat from Super Baharoth, thank you so much. Can you cast the Demon 5 up Feel No Pain and the Chaos Space Marine 5 Feel No Pain since they have the same name? Drum roll please, no. Okay, Hate let that, me let me double check that. But yes, if they have the same name, they... it's if they have the same name, you cannot. But okay. I will double check. I believe you are correct, but I believe it's delightful yep. agonies for both, which is delightful agonies for the demons, yep. and I would be shocked if it weren't delightful agonies for chaos space marines, which is fine. Yeah, uh, Charles S says the possessed won't get plus one to hit. Bad Interesting. Jack. Maybe Bad Jack. do they only get the keyword Slanesh, not mark of Slanesh, and maybe that's the difference. No, they get the mark. It might just be that uh, they gain the icon. I don't icon think they keyword. get the mark. I think they just get the keyword Slanesh. I don't think they get mark of Slanesh because I don't think the possessed get fights first. Um. Yeah. Okay. I, I trust. So I trust maybe you on maybe that. the mark is where uh, where it goes awry. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Um, so this don't benefit from the icon ability since you need the mark of Slanesh, not just Slanesh. Okay. Bang, call There it. you go. All right. So they Thank don't have chat. the mark, but they do have an icon, which is what I'm about to cut because it doesn't do anything. Yep. Um, so that gets us five points. That's dope. Cool. Um, so I'm pretty certain that they're both called Delightful Agonies. Uh, I'm looking them up right now. Yeah, no Dark Hereticus. Yeah, so my thought is I love that Slanesh yes. detachment theoretically. Delightful agonies. I hope that we'll be able to fit in a possessed brick as well. I, my theory here is that we're going to end up cutting either the Demon Prince or the Disco to make it fit. Because if we have the big possessed brick, 12 Fiends, 25 Noise Marines, that sounds like an awesome list. I don't know if that's all going to fit, but I really hope it does. It that's is a list I would play. very close. Is Have you cut the Demon Prince slash Lord Disco yet? No. Because I think if we cut one of those and replace it with a cheap combat character like a Master of Executions, I think it'll end up fitting. Oh, it, it definitely fits at that point. Uh, and then we have some extra points to make units six mans, which is un, which is what we need. 
Cool. Um, a master of executions is not in the HQ slot because we're not world leaders. Good. Yep, they're in the elite slot. Master of executions are quite good. How's okay, the... we are 70 under. Would you like me to tell you the list? Yeah, where's our power level at as well? Yeah, power level is a bit funky. Okay. Uh, we will need to get some some six mans in here. Got it. So we have a demon prince with wings. Mm -hmm. We have a master of possessions okay. with Marcus Lanesh. We have five noise marines all at 135. Power Fist, Icon, Blast Master. Love that. We have a Master of Executions. We have 10 Possessed. We have two Solo Spawn. Okay. I put a, I put a second one in. I love Solo Spawn. We have a Trance Weaver. We have 10 Demonettes. And we have two units of Fiends. Trance Weaver, 10 Demonettes. Two units of six Fiends. 12 Fiends. That sounds yeah. gross. That's 1930? 1930. That sounds like an amazing list. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? actually it? sounds really good. Holy crap. Now, the power level does not fit. We yeah. still need 22 power level in the uh, Space Marine half. Chaos okay. Space Marine half. How many power level are five Noise Marines? Five Noise Marines are six. How many power level is six Noise Marines? Excellent question. Twelve. Okay. So let's <laughs> add, take four of these Noise Marines to a six main and see what the points are. Yep. Give me one second. Yep. That's just what I want to do. Yep. No, you can really mess with power level. Yeah. Pretty hard. I'm so glad that they made this a thing. Yeah, yeah. The Demon Prince definitely has to stay because he gives real ones to everything. It's yeah. The Demon Prince is unfortunately I love the Disco Lord. The Demon Prince is more important in this list than the Disco Lord. If you can only have one, the Demon Prince is the one you keep. Yes, you can also yep. Yeah, so that would make it a ninety-two power level uh, CSM detachment. It does leave us over by fourteen. Uh, how so much that's power the solo solo spawn one. So if we cut it, we're not messing up the power level. And we're now legal. And we are now 11 points under, actually. So give me that ex entire list again. Yep. So now it is a legal list you can okay. take. Uh, and you get your buffs. So Demon Prince with Wings. A Master of Possessions. 25 Noise Marines. Uh, sorry. Uh, one unit of five Noise Marines, as pictured. Four units of six Noise Marines, as pictured, just plus a guy. Mm -hmm. uh, Master of Executions. 10 Possessed, a Solo Spawn, a Trance Weaver, 10 Demonettes, 12 Fiends. And what's the exact points cost? 1989. So... And we are at 91 we... power level in the uh, Arch okay. of Omen Detachment. Can we take some of these Noise Marines and give them uh, Sonic Blasters? Uh, we... I think a Sonic Blaster is 3 points. We can. Yeah, it is 5 points. Five points per Sonic Five Blaster? points per Sonic Blaster. Ugh, so that would be two Sonic Blasters gained. It's not. Woo! I mean, I don't know what else to do with ten points here. Uh, is the Demon Prince as kitted as a Demon Prince can be? Point as wise? kitted. Yeah, points wise, it's as kitted. Um, uh, we have the Mark of Slanesh on everyone who has to buy it. Oh, sorry. The Master of Executions needs to have it. Oh, that's tw how many points? It's 20. Oh, brother. Yeah, that's we cut the other solo spawn, I think. Oh, yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. It's mm -hmm. totally fine. Not a big and deal. So, so just because to it's the one... demon prince and the uh, and the master possession and the uh, yeah everyone the else all buying a twenty point mark slash. This is it's it's really annoying, but it's really annoying. I don't know what to tell you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now we have sixteen points because I cut the solo spawn, which puts us it at ninety. Oh, because you get one power level for taking the mark of slanesh. Okay, cool. Well, um, so we our power level still good. Power level is still um, good. And we now have 16 points? We now have 16 points. How many points is a Doom Siren? A Doom Siren is 10. I, I guess. I guess, right? Um, like, I really, yeah. what I what I would love to have, it, and again, is there any way to make a Demon Prince or anyone else here 10 points cheaper? We could take off his sword. No, we could. Which we don't want. Nope, 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 okay. nope, no, 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 no. Uh, we could drop, we can't drop any points on the Master of Possessions. We could drop a Blast Master on the five-man squad. I don't wow. want to do that. I don't really want to do that. The Blast Master is like some of the best parts here. Yeah, and other than that, no, that's it. We could cut a Possessed. I really do want to get one, just one of these squads to have like four Blast Ma or four Sonic Blasters and a Blast Master so that I can step out and do the Mortal Wound strat. But it's like Mortal Wounds on six is you have 12 shots. Yeah, I hear that, but that's six mortals every time, I, I swear. I know when Mark rolls it, but it's not going to work for you. I just Mark, it's everyone. Yeah. Um. Yeah, no, I don't, we're not fitting that. So with 16 points, I think we're just slapping AI. Uh, I, oh, okay, hold on. We could take, is it, Power Fist is 10 points? 
Yes. We could take one squad, one six man, drop the uh, the power fist and have five sonic blasters. I I think one squad of that power fist is okay. I don't care about the sonic blasters like at all though. It's just one unit that has a little more weight of fire because right now there's nothing that wants to step out and kill Titan Guardsmen. Honestly, I think what we do is we make the five man not have a power fist and just be a six man, and then just has a and have a six man with five sonic blasters. Yeah, that's what... yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. The five man, I think we take it off instead of on, off a six man. Oh, the five man enough, yeah. stands in the back, I think. But so then they'd have four and a blast master. Because you're not cutting the Blastmaster. No, no, no. I'm saying you take the Power Fist off the five man. That gives you points to make a six man. Oh. Because it's oh, yeah, a yeah, guy yeah. with a... Yeah. To, okay, yeah. I don't care who loses the Power Fist. Yeah. Okay. That sounds like it's going to put us at 1999 with functional power level. Uh, Yes, it should. And then it's just a question of how are we spending six command points. So the... um. The demons aren't getting any CP because you can't buy them warlord traits. You could buy them relics, but there genuinely are not any relics that we care to give them. That is, this is true. And then it's just a question of what, um, we know we're putting the, the black rune of damnation on the 10 man possessed. Yep. So, so that's going to take us to down to five. Spend, and we have three characters. Um, I personally really, really like giving the um uh whatever they're called i really like giving the twin demon weapons to the demon prince yes then he gets d3 extra attacks with his sword and d3 extra attacks with his claw yes that's Thar awesome. thoris and riol mm -hmm. the rapacious and then um i think you combat combo that with uh real wounds yeah the fires of uh of hate or whatever the flames of spite flames of spite because then you also get mortal wounds on sixes to win and real wounds i feel like that demon prince is amazing yeah, that demon prince slays clean. Okay, so then and that's then you three give, CP down. We have three left, and then you have the master of executions. Mm -hmm. You can give him the. I mean, there's there's a bunch of fight control stuff, yep. right? Um, there's a bunch of fight control stuff in Emperor's Children. Let me look that up because some of that is probably good. You can also take the plus one strength and attacks and reroll hits warlord trait which and is given that he does a mortal wound mortal wounds on sixes to hit i kind of like that yep, he does two sixes. mortal wounds on sixes to hit let me just make sure great. that's the every i mean the warlord trait mm -hmm. uh yeah hatred incarnate gets plus one strength and attacks and reroll hits okay so that feels great on a master of executions it does we have two cv left yep so let me look up um the is there anything I can do to make this Master Possession cast a little bit better? Because right now, he wants to cast Cursed Earth for a 4 pen of all possessed. He or or the plus one toughness of the possessed. Um, yeah. We want to cast Heal a guy. And I wouldn't mind if that guy happened to be the one throwing out um, the 5 of Feeling Pain on the turns that you do it. Because obviously you're putting it on the Infernal Raptures as well and just kind of deciding turn by turn who gets the Feeling Pain. Yeah, let me... Uh... You can, by the way, take reroll hits and subtract one from enemy models within gain range. Nah, you're not going to do that. Um, Let me see. Uh, so finishing out, just finishing out the Master of Executions. Mm -hmm. So you can take Fatal Sonancy, which is every end of your movement phase, you pick an enemy unit within 12 and you roll 66. For each four up, they take a mortal wound. It's That's all right. Cool. Mark really likes it. Um, you can go... Uh, Mantle of Traitors is something that uh, someone in the chat is recommending, which gives a uh, free epic deed strat, which is the fight last for free. Yep, and a full hit rerolls as well, so you don't need that warlord trait. Oh, uh, okay. That's that's all probably worth it. I like the warlord trait a lot. Yeah, like is, a is, lot. Is the fight is the fight last to two CP or one CP? That's the end of the questions. Um, I know. I'm sorry. Soporific gaze. It is a two CP, so that is quite nice. Mantle of Traitors. So we could do. I think we could do that instead, um, which leaves us still at 2 CP, and uh, the chat is also arguing for the Master Possession getting the Liber, which yeah. is that the thing that makes him cast better? Because that's what I, I want. I believe so. I was going to get to that when we got to the Master no Possessions. Yep. Um, Sorry, I'm just reading the chat, because uh, I don't yeah, think it's in front of me. I have not. Uh, it's been a second since I looked through Emperor's no, Children. very reasonable. Yeah. Um... There's not really that many good relics. You could take Fatal Sonancy to do Mortal Wounds. It's Ite. It's not great. I'm okay if we end up starting at 1 CP. 
is that where we would be at? So if we had right Master now, Possessions at one, we have uh, two CP on the Black DP. Rune, mm -hmm. we have two CP on the Demon Prince, and then we would have one CP on the Master of Executions. Master of Executions. I, I honestly, if we're just going to give him one thing, I think Mantle of Traitors is better. Yeah. So let's look what we can get for the Master of Possessions. Mm -hmm. yep. Relics of Chaos. Let's find out exactly what that library does just to make sure. Yep. But it sounds, if it's something that makes him cast better, it sounds like what I want. Yep. The Libra Hereticus lets him cast an extra psychic power, and then you add six inches to the range of their powers. Well, that's pretty good. It is pretty good. Yeah. I think um, that's worth it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's pretty good. Done. That's where I would go. So let's, uh, and yes, Tyrannosaurus Rex, we could use some dinosaurs in the list. So a little bit of research uh, mm -hmm. down, but I think we've come up with quite a good that, list. That honestly, this is like the, the best, like, on paper, this looks like the best CSM list I've seen in ARCs. Yes. Like, I actually really like this. Yeah, I would actually play this. I, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, I could, I could be tempted to get some Slanesh back on the table. Yeah. You know me. No, this is no joke. I agree. Best arts list for CSM that I think I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's just scary. All right. All right. So let's go through it one more time. Give it to me from We've the top. We've got a Demon Prince with Wings, mm -hmm. Mark of Slanesh, Hellforged Sword, Tharis and Riol, mm -hmm. and Flames of Spite. Yep. So and that he's guy. The warlord. And he's the Warlord. Love it. We've got a Master of Possessions with the Libra Hereticus. Mm -hmm. We've got. One five-man noise marine unit with just a blast master and an icon. Well, it doesn't need the icon, but you have the points, so you have an icon. Then we have one six-man noise marine with five sonic blasters and a blast master, an icon, and a power fist. Cool. We have three six-man noise marines with a blast master, a power fist, and chain swords, mm -hmm. and and an icon as well. We have a master of executioner, a master of executions with the mantle of traitors and Marcus Lanesh. We have a 10-man possessed unit with the Black Rune of Damnation. Sounds really good. Then we have a Slanesh uh, patrol. patrol with a Trance Weaver with uh, Delight Flagnes, just so you have the option. Or mm -hmm. if you're planning to not cast the Feel No Pain, you can, ca you can cast the plus attack and sixes explode. I think it Up only goes one spell. I would still take the Feel No Pain, frankly. No, I'm saying you can choose to oh, have yeah, either yeah, of them, too. You, you can choose to have either of them. Yep. Uh, but I think you do choose the, the Feel No Pain for when you mm -hmm. when you want it. Uh, then we have 10 Demonettes, and we have two units of six Fiends. I like it. Uh, Secondary-wise, I think this list can do uh, a very reasonable um, Banners. I think you can do a very reasonable um, Adorn the Canvas Eclectic, which is the Empress Children uh, specific one. Which no got, a lot, got a lot better. Got a lot better. And then you get your choice of the uh, destroy people on objectives or a psychic secondary. Because you have uh, three casters to go with, and you have a little bit of caster redundancy because you have two different casters with uh, Delight Flagnes. So if the Master Possessions is ever throwing out Delight Flagnes on the Possessed Brick, you can just have that Inferno Rapturous try to do a psychic secondary. Yep, Warp so Ritual I think is very solid. Yeah, I think this is a better than average Chaos Space Marine secondary plan. Yeah. Better than average secondary plan, I think this is a very good yeah. CSM list. Yeah, I really... I, like stunned that that came together points wise the way that it did came together points wise I really thought power level be like wise. 2200 points yeah you were like i don't think the power level is gonna work and i'm like i don't know that feels doable it's the six <laughs> the six man noise burns um all right that i like it all right i think that is uh i think that is it for us for today. We have all the super chats addressed. Okay. Well, Again, welcome, welcome, welcome to Moonlit Inari mm -hmm. into the War Room. Uh, and for anyone else who wants to, you know, submit a list to fix my list or just check out what well, everything we got going on in the War Room, or if you, you know, aren't going to be able to catch the RTT live and so you want to catch it after the so fact. So many reasons to go to the War Room. So many reasons to go to the War Room, and it's right down in the description. It is thewarroom.vhx.tv, but if you don't remember that, because and I don't blame you, it is down there in the description. We have a three-day free trial. You can get in and see what it's all about, see what all the hype's about. All right. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Tune in tomorrow for the start of the Streamhouse RTT. Uh, it's going to be a really exciting weekend, so make sure you've got it on your calendars. Make sure you come watch some amazing games. Thank you so much for your support us, everyone. We hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. Make sure you check out that link below, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.